Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the value binding that Knockout provides. This is a form specific binding designed to work with input elements. We can add a value binding that will allow us to easily implement filtering capabilities to our app. First of all we'll need a few new view model properties. So the first one will be called filter term and will be an observable. It won't have a value initially. Next we can have original photos and that will just be null to begin with and is not observable. And we can also add an original length property and we'll just set that to zero to start with. And again, it's not observable. Now we can add a new computed observable that will do the actual filtering. We'll call this one filter. So inside we first want to declare some variables. So first of all, we want to get the length of the photos array. We'll also create an empty array called results. We can store a local reference to our view model for convenience. And we also want to store the term. So that's the filter term. We'll be referencing the photos observable array. So the function will be executed each time this array changes, including when the page initially loads and the array is initially populated. We don't want this to happen, so next we can use an if statement to determine whether the method should take any action. So if the term is not undefined, which it will be when the array is initially populated, then we can do something. We only want to do something if the term is not undefined. To perform the filter, we'll use a for loop to cycle through each item in the photos array. And inside the loop, we just want to see if the photo's title contains the filter term. So if the index of, of the title does not equal minus one, then it contains the filter term. And in this case, we want to push the photo into the results array. So it looks like there's a syntax error here. Let's just fix that quickly. So if it doesn't equal minus one. So if the photo's title does contain the term, we push the object into the results array we defined at the start of the computed observable. Once the for loop has completed, we want to make a copy of the existing photos array, then update the array to only include those items that match the filter. So now we just need to add the binding to the HTML. And we'll use the value binding here. And the input will be bound to the filter term view model property. 
So this is automatically a two-way binding because it's an input element and raises the correct events. So we should find now that when we run the page and enter a word into this input, the filter term property of the view model will be updated and the filter computed observable, which references this property, will be executed automatically, filtering the images. Pretty cool and pretty straightforward, right? So let's just test it's working as we expect. So now we're only displaying the photos whose titles contain the words fish. So now we need to think about removing the filter. We can do this easily enough without adding much extra code. First, we need to add a second check to the first branch of the if statement we just added in our computed observable. So this, this conditional here. So we can say if term does not equal undefined and term does not equal an empty string, So directly after the for loop, we can just add a new conditional. So we can say if the photos array has length, sorry, if the length of the photos array is equal to the original length, then what we want to do is set the original photos to the current photos array. Then we add an extra conditional for if the filter term is empty. So in this case, we set the photos array back to the original array. So this will bring back all of the photos when the filter term is removed from the input. So all we need to do now is set the original length property, which we can do at the end of the handle photos method. Awesome. So we don't need to set this here now because we're already setting it in the other branch here. And we just want to move this so that it comes after here. No, oh, sorry. So we need to set that here and this branch just needs to move put that in the wrong place. It needs to be the second branch of the outer if. Okay, so let's try it out. So the filtering is working as it was before, but now when we remove this, we should get the original photos back. And we do. Wonderful. So in this lesson, we looked at the value binding and saw how it enables a two-way binding between a property of our view model and an input element on the page. This binding allowed us to easily add filtering to our application without too much additional code. In the next lesson, we're gonna cover just a couple of features that we don't need to use in our application, but which are nevertheless useful and worth mentioning. Thanks for watching.